One of the aims of teacher education is to assist educational professionals develop competencies related to the evaluation, selection, and deployment of various learning technologies. In application courses, it is easy to focus on learning how to deploy technology rather than how to effectively and purposefully implement learning technologies in order to achieve goals and objectives. However, learning the how-to is important. If one is unable to confidently use new technologies, one simply will not try. It is precisely because of this the ePortfolio is chosen as the summative assessment task. A student's ePortfolio aggregates what is learned and is a means of articulating and evidencing the prior. An ePortfolio allows the student to collect and organize the content of their portfolio in many formats, including audio, video, graphical, and text. The ability to collect, reflect, and connect aligns with assessment for learning principles. The rationale behind the choice of formative assessment task is to be able to assess critical standards for mathematical principles. It is meant to capture the processes and proficiencies that we want the students to have, not just the knowledge and skills, but how they use this knowledge and the skills. They capture the habits of mind or thinking skills that are specific to mathematics. The assessment task focus on the first three skills. These skills are the ability to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them, to reason abstractly and quantitatively, and to construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. In order to do this, the task must allow for multiple entry points and solution parts, as well as it must require students to defend and justify their solutions by comparing multiple solution parts. The task must have relevant realistic context and must not involve single steps or routine algorithms. Rubrics were the choice of assessment tools as their main purpose is to assess performance. The intended learning outcomes is both, in both instances are best indicated by performances. Thus, a rubric is the best way to assess them. Note that the performances themselves are not the learning outcomes, but indicators of learning outcomes. A rubric, because it is structured on observation and it contains within it a description of performances, it can be used for feedback and teaching. Both rubrics provided are analytic and general, where each criterion is evaluated separately. Its purpose is to give diagnostic informative feedback to the student. It supports self-evaluation as well as learning by helping students see good work as bigger than one task. We will now look at some tutorials that will help you hone your assessment skills using rubrics. In this rubric, there are two sections. One at the top and the other along the side. At the top, there are five sections. Not attempted, beginning, developing, competent and exemplary. Along the sides, there are the criteria that will be scored. Since this is a rubric for an ePortfolio, each criterion is evaluated separately. Content, organization, professionalism, reflective thinking, and creative thinking. Each of these criteria 
is further subdivided. For each sub-criterion, there is a corresponding description for the specific amount of points that are to be received. Each row indicates what is expected for an exemplary performance in a particular criterion and conversely what is to be expected for a poor performance. If the student teacher is doing an excellent job in say clarity of organization then we can expect a clear and concise way of communicating ideas. If on the other hand they are in the developing stage then communication may be sometimes unclear and wordy. If performance is poor then there would not be enough content to communicate ideas. It is important that you familiarize yourself with the rubric so that you will know what you are looking for in order to score the student's work. Read each section across a criterion and make an appropriate judgment after viewing the student's work to determine which one of the descriptors best suit the student's work and what mark is appropriate for each criterion. After this is done for each criterion, the sum of all the scores is obtained. This will give the student's percentage. Let us look at the formative assessment task. In part one, we will be assessing the student's ability to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. We need to look at the information gathered in the Wrong Robin discussion forum. We'll first look at an exemplar. There is evidence of an efficient strategy. The correct answer is achieved. There is analysis and the student justifies and supports the decisions made and conclusions. In the novice's response, there is no evidence of reasoning or strategy. In part two, we will be assessing the student's ability to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them, as well as his ability to reason abstractly and quantitatively. For question one, we will look at the Google document to gather information. In the exemplar's response, the student is able to make appropriate mathematical representation, whereas in the novice's response, there is no attempt made. For part B, the exemplary student is able to provide evidence to justify decisions and support conclusions, as well as make the necessary mathematical connections. In the novice's response, there is no mathematical basis for arguments made and connections made are mathematically incorrect. In part C's exemplary response, there is an efficient strategy appropriate mathematical representation and extended thinking, analysis of the situation and extended prior knowledge, deductive arguments, the correct answer, use of mathematical connections, evidence is provided to support decisions and conclusions, and formal language is used. The novice's response, there is absence of reasoning, strategy, and attempts to mathematical construction. Arguments have no mathematical basis and connections are contextually irrelevant. The remaining components are assessed in a similar manner using appropriate rubric criteria for each task. 
let us look at some other performance-based assessment tools. Firstly, checklists. Checklists, the least complex form of scoring system, are simple lists indicating the presence of the elements. A major drawback is it does not indicate the quality of the element. Basic rating scales. These are checklists of criteria that evaluate the quality of elements and include a scoring system. The main drawback with rating scales is that the meaning of the numerical ratings can be vague. Without descriptors for the ratings, the rater must make a judgment based on their perception of the meanings of the terms. Holistic rating scales. These use a short narrative of characteristics to award a single score based on an overall impression of a student's performance on a task. A drawback to using holistic rating scales is that they do not provide specific areas of strengths and weaknesses and therefore are less useful to help students focus their improvement efforts. Some of the challenges experienced in designing the rubric were ensuring that there was a layout of all the possible criteria that could be used to judge students' responses without overwhelming the user, determining whether each evaluative criterion represented a key attribute of the skill being assessed, ensuring that each criterion is teachable, and lastly, ensuring there existed delineation of the nuances of each evaluative criterion so that different people using the rubric would invariably score students' responses in an identical manner. Some of the insights gain will evaluative criteria should capture the essential ingredients of the skills being measured, not a particular display of that skill applied to a specific task. And rubrics should offer cues about what is genuinely significant in a student's response, as well as they should offer teachers guidance on the key features of the tested skill.